What you see here is a very uncommon TV. This is a 1975 Sears TV OEM'd by Warwick. And at first you're probably gonna think this was a Zenith Avanti, but it's not. This TV is very special to me in that while it's not the exact cabinet, it's almost the same TV and I'll get into that later in this video. But for now, let me explain where, what happened about this. Back in May, 2019, we were at the Early Television Foundation swap meet auction. And I were loading up the car with some of my auction scores, such as the 1955 months over there. And a friend of ours, uh, he was showing me pictures of a TV he's gonna pick up on Craigslist in Ohio. Now he's not really into solid state stuff, but when I saw it, I've been looking for at least some similarity to that TV, this TV here, and I freaked out, okay? So I've had this since May of 2019. Uh, I think the following day, a, we went, it was a freebie on Craigslist. We went, we traveled like two hours in Ohio, in the middle of nowhere, and picked this TV up. It was in the basement of a couple that just bought a house. It was like a finished basement, like a game room with green shag carpet. Now we didn't go inside to get it. This was already in a garage, a, 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 um, a detached garage when we picked it up. And what are you doing little dude. But it being a secondary TV, it's actually a low hour set, a very strong CRT. That said, the reason why I got the backup because I also wanted to show the um, internals. But uh, despite low hours, uh, yeah, it did need a recap but not in the way you would think. It worked for the most part, but after watching it, you start to notice some things uh, drifting or changing. And like it, you would readjust it and then next time you power it on, it's totally different. This TV ended up getting a full recap. Uh, it wasn't just like, you know, one or two caps were out of tolerance or bad. They all were, even the filters. Uh, mostly just out of tolerance, more than 20% either way. Um, and they were drifting. There's actually one molded paper cap in it. And I changed that just for reliability's sake. But yeah, these are niche, these are Nichicon caps, but even though it was low hours, just the simple age of it, they went bad. And so I just wanted to show that all have been tested. But ever since I did the recap, it's completely solid now. And it will be reliable for years to come. This is the back of the TV. Now, this is the TV in the Sears catalog for $699.95. Right there. Very, very similar to a Zenith Avanti. However... And I'll get into the greater details. The TV on, on the upper right of the catalog for $5.99 was my grandfather's TV from 1975. Although his was a November 1975 set. I'll get into why that's important in a minute. But that exact cabinet is in that exact front panel layout in a work built set is exactly what I'm looking for. This one was manufactured March 1975, but has many 1974 components in it. This TV uh, from the 1970, let's just say this is the 1975 model, and even though my grandfather's was manufactured November 1975, I would say it's a 1976 model with many 1975 parts. The chassis is very similar between the two, but his. Um, the flyback and high voltage supplies were on the right side, but incoming power was still on the left. And that the boards were very similar. And uh, 
there's probably many more differences. It's been almost, um, it's been 23 years since I've been in that, but I'm just so glad it's almost the same TV and the memories flip back. And also the antenna terminals are moved up. So let's just uh, take a quick look in here. All your auxiliary controls, brightness, contrast, vertical sharpness, and automatic frequency control defeat are in the rear. Your convergence panel, uh, yoke and convergence assemblies. My grandfather said had a CRT neck board rather than a socket. But yeah, this is a uh, 1975, 1974 parts and it's all solid state, uses a high voltage tripler. Everything still works fine. There's the CRT sticker. Here's the CRT type. It's the 13th week of 1975. Now, being a low hour set, oh, this has a pretty nice speaker in it too. Um, being a low hour set, the dust was real loose and it cleaned up real nice. So I, that's about all I did in here was just wiped everything down. Here's the full model number. And yes, it even has a cable TV switch or would have had one on another model instead of my grandfather's. And I re-glued, I laminated that and re-glued that back on for transistor locations. Now, the construction of this set, the base is fiberglass and this is wood and the top is that. I'm gonna be cleaning it up this video. It did need repainted. It's been spray painted. It, when I got it, it was, the base and the white pieces were horribly stained and yellowed. So it's been repainted and it looks great. But the inside obviously is still all the original color of the wood as it was painted from the factory. And then we'll get to the back cover in just a minute. I also thought it was amusing the length of the uh, delay line going between the boards there. Now, I know during this time frame, Warwick had a lot of um, quality control problems, but for these sets here, I wanna say they're pretty reliable. My grandfather's set was used so heavily that the picture tube was completely worn out when I got it. And I'll get into again later in the video, but never gave any trouble. And this thing worked when I got it. It just, things were drifting and because of caps. <laughs> now, because I've had this TV recapped for two years now, and only now getting around to do a video of it, just busy. So, finally got to show the caps I changed into the trash they go. Filter cans, yes, they were marginal. And a molded paper cap, off you go. So this is what the back looks like. And it's funny how the CRT cup looks like a rotary engine. It's also special that my second vintage TV I obtained in uh, May, June of 1998 was a 1975 March, same year, March 1975 Sears. It was their last offered hybrid tube TV that was color, Warwick, and I still have all the tubes for it. No longer have that, long story. Um, love to find one of those again. Somebody had one close to it on the vintage television groups. It was like a year or two older. But uh, anyways, this is the back. Same hole pattern as my grandfather's. This was mounted up higher. Power cord, I think on his was in the middle. Uh, let's see, pilot light if used is soldered in place. All the pilot lights were good on this. Fully transistorized. And it still says cycles per second. 
instead of Hertz, even though this is from 75. Name plate info, focus, horizontal hold, your G2 controls, vertical linearity and height, drive green and blue. My grandfather's didn't have a service switch. One button color adjust. So yeah, this is the back. And now I'm going to give this thing some fresh furniture polish. Well, I just got done polishing up the whole cabinet and a little dude decides to get on it. <laughs> Being all cute and stuff. What are you doing, little dude? Hey. In contrast to my grandfather's set, his had a top, the top was black vinyl. This was padded vinyl. This instead is wood with a, a laminated wood insert. This is an RCA Delta Gun CRT. And over here, one button color with a red pilot light. On off, VHF. UHF and the controls here, which I bumped while I was cleaning it, has little white indicators and sears, solid state. Um, the 1970, late 75, early 76 models did not have the colors on there, like the colored triangles on there, arrows or the low high, just said color, tint, and volume, but still had the white lines. Even the volume has a white line when you reach the center of the range, but this TV, this TV's loud. Um, I still have uh, some pieces off my grandfather's set, including the knobs, which I actually used to part of it on this one. Um, it was missing a um, metal retaining ring on this, just like his was too, oddly. So now this one has both on both sides. We're going to these little prongs and channels go like this. It's pretty unique how the UHF tuner works. And uh, the channel indicators actually have two neon lamps behind each. Both are still good. Same with my grandfather's set. It had uh, despite all the hours, they were still good. Um, what I'm getting at is his set was used heavily from when they bought it, I guess, for Christmas of 1975, all the way up until, unfortunately, when my grandmother, Virginia, passed away um, in 19, late 85. So it had roughly 10 solid years of daily use. It sat until 1991 when he remarried and then that TV got extremely heavy use from 1991 through 92. In early 92 that's when the picture started to get dark and that's when I went behind the set. I'm only 10 years old at the time and started experimenting with the controls and I got you know the three screen controls. Yeah guess what they were all three maxed out. <laughs> but at least it had a somewhat viewable picture and it was still used regularly up until I got it in this on December 23rd 1997 that's the day when I got that TV and it was my first vintage TV I really wish I still had it and I could have still had it if I had my resources I do now I could have um, fixed the you know, if I had a CRT rejuvenator or at least something to cook it a little bit to wake it up or get a replacement CRT. But this is the next best thing. And I clearly clear remember this from when I was little. And this is a side profile of the TV, which isn't showing up that well, but it is angled. Uh, it's like a trapezoid dude. And the picture tube is slanted up. As you can see, I can hold it straight down. That's how it looks. So very similar to a Xenith Avanti, but it's not. 
I will be pairing it with the 1978 Sears Beta Vision, which I know is OEM by Sanyo, but it's still period correct. It's, I need to do a little bit of service on it. So in the meantime, now one of the VCRs I'm gonna have paired to this might seem an odd choice, but I have a good explanation. It's uh, this Emerson VCP uh, <laughs> 680. Um, thrift store find. Uh, oddly, I am still um, rather partial to these uh, early 90s Orion Emersons because that was what our first VC VHS VCRs were. And they weren't bad either. Uh, main failure points, just a typical dirty mode switch. But uh, when I got my grandfather's TV, uh, I had my 1990 Emerson VCR 964 hooked to it in the bed of my dad's truck. I'll explain that. It was evening, went down my grandfather's house, picked it up, brought it home in the bed of his truck. So he had to go to work that night because he did night shift. And it was still in the bed of his, our Dodge 89 Dodge Dakota. I had my 19... 90 Emerson VCR 964 hooked to it and playing it in the bed of his truck. And the next day, we Christmas Eve, we brought it out into the basement. And then I grabbed our then troublesome 1991 Emerson VCS 990 Hi-Fi Stereo VCR and hooked to it. I know what the problem is now, it was a dirty mode switch, but at the time I didn't know how to remedy that. And that's when it all began. Now, as mentioned, I'm gonna have that Sears beta cord hooked to it. So on the other side of it, I'm gonna have this little Emerson VCP for that part of the memory, because the video quality is still the same as uh, those other VCRs I just mentioned, both of which I still have and are in my possession. Alright, here we go. Little dude. One of the adjustments that needed to be made uh, was the color killer. Um, even though I said it that uh, initially, this is, must have been borderline, but yeah, it, was, it started showing color on black and white or snow images like this. I also had to tweak the high voltage. It was a little bit low. And got the width proper. And now, our feature presentation. watching the special VHS version of Zootopia. Non-widescreen edition. But yeah, then I, I didn't put it on the scent core, but the emissions are nice and strong. Really good focus and sharpness. Excellent convergence. I have one button color turned on. I when we did all the adjustments so with all the controls in the center as you see of color intent and in the back of brightness and contrast it's right where it should be including when you turn off one button color turn off my desk lamp so i get rid of the lamp reflection in the screen let's see if it's real good color 
ever wonder how your mom and me got to be so darn happy? No. Nope. Well, we gave up on and our this dreams and we settled. My first, oh, yes, that's right. I had my real exposure said, up see, close to a Delta you gun CRT you. back in the day. It's kind of cool, you could see all the individual scan lines. And, uh, well, um, heck, you know, you want to talk about making the world a better place, no better way to do yeah, it. You can see the triads of yes. colors. Your dad, me, your 275 brothers and sisters, we're changing the world. Yeah. One carrot at a time. Amen to that. Carrot farming is yep. no nice, sharp better. razor lines. Yeah, just as long as you don't believe in them too much. Where'd the heck she go? Give me your tickets right now. I'm gonna kick your meat little sheep butt. Ow! Cut it out! I always love how all the felines are fascinated in everything, including VCR operation. The little dude! The only place you'll be selling popsicles is the prison cafeteria. It's called a hustle, sweetheart. So, yeah. Operating the tuner. It goes the UHF, it turns off the pilot lamp up there and it comes down here. I really loved how this TV lit up the whole dial if it says 14 rather than lighting up the number. It just gives it that different aesthetic. shipping and handling. Other books will follow. One about every other month. Keep only the ones you want. Cancel any time. Call 1-800-228-1200. That's 1-800-521-5888 or send $19.95 for records or cassette tapes or $24.95 for contact this plus $4.95 shipping and handling to the address on your screen. Next on Moonlighting. Hang in there. No, I think you want my baby. I have to baby fatty hat. Distinctive new cougar, Mercury, the shape you want to be in. Someday, 
the last moonlighting ever, the most talked about show on television, the romantic comedy that won six Emmy Awards and three Golden Globes. And now it's time to say so long and find out what happens in the farewell episode of Moonlighting, Sunday. The year 2039. Life-size imaginary playgrounds, law and order maintained by science. Taking 50 years into our future, watch the electronic time machine Thursday. Let's keep going. Cool. Continuing on with this very special episode. This picture was taken in September 1998. There's the TV in my room. There's the 1975 Sears Warwick hybrid tube TV, the last one they made. And this one right here in particular is very important. Uh, it's a 1982 Sears Sanyo metal cabinet set that is important for the next upcoming episode. And, to make things even more special, here's a picture of me as an infant in front of the same TV. So ideally, it would be really great if I could get that original TV back. But, in the meantime, as mentioned, this one is not only like the same front panel and almost basically the same TV, it's an even more rare cabinet that probably nobody else has seen aside from the Zenith Avanti set. And to finish off this video, when I had the original 1975 Sears console TV, I made a series of VHS tapes called the Mystery Tape Series. See, this one was a late one. This is number seven. All right. And it's important because I had one of those Game Boy cameras. And in 1998, I used it and recorded it on this tape. So this next part of the tape I'm going to show was um, from the Game Boy camera part of the tape. This is actually originally recorded on extended play dub to a standard play, so it's a second gen copy. Not perfect, but you get the idea. Mm -hmm. 
See? TV, same TV, and tailspin, of course. But that is the one thing about this TV. Uh, it was used all the way up until the Super Nintendo era. And uh, it handles video games very well. Convergence all the way to the corners is damn near perfect. Is that like no color bleeding at all? Uh, being over RF or anything, it's like perfect. One thing I totally, totally forgot to mention, I should have got a video while I was in there showing the chassis, but on the uh, alpha board, which is your IF and audio, and also where the tuner plugs in, down here in front, it actually had connections for, it says VTR. You're thinking, wait a minute, this TV's from late 1974, early 75. Why is that have a VTR input? Cartridge vision. This uh, chassis was probably used in another Sears set to, for cartridge vision, which uh, is a very short-lived format that only recorded like every third frame i think uh look it up on look it up on youtube but yeah seriously this tv had uh vtr inputs on there it's not listed on the schematic anywhere on here that would be interesting if i took a look at it see if it it is just simply a line level inputs that can be switched so we will conclude this video but first, turning the TV off. Picture this sort of blanks like that. But this one has a low hour set. It's a unique set. And it will be good for years, if not decades to come, trouble free. So, on that note, show the back side one more time. Thanks for watching. And like and subscribe.